familiar because we did this um, with absolute value graphs, but this was the day. Are we ready? You guys ready? This was the day that the sub was here. So you've done it before, but it's been a little while. Um, and then also, depending on how uh, much you were paying attention to your work or watching the videos or whatever when the sub was here, you might have understood it well or not at all. So when we look at the equation of uh, quadratic, uh, the parent function, which is the function with no transformations happening to it at all, is y equals x squared. That's like the regular version of the graph. And so y equals x squared is what we're going to start with. So to graph that, we're going to grab our calculators and start by just pressing the y equals button up here. So y equals, and we're gonna graph x squared. So the x button is right here underneath the mode, x. And then to get the squared, it's right there above the log button, squared. So we're graphing x squared, and everybody should be following along. So Brayden, I'm waiting for you. Everybody should be typing. Y equals X squared. Then we're gonna hit graph. And once you've got it, I want you to show me your calculator screen from where you're sitting so I can see that you've got it. Got one person, two, three, yep, 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 yep. Y equals X squared. Show me your calculator screen. Yep. Uh, graph it for me, Christian. Alex, can you show me yours again? Yep. Yep. So bring it, come up here and I'll show you how to do it. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're good. You can put an X. X squared. Could I like switch out my calculator and then like automatically have like a different one? Why do you want to switch it out? Because I like can't see the words. Yeah, you can trade it with another one. All right. Everybody got theirs graphed? Okay. You just type something wrong. Yep, you're good. Bring it up, Dylan. You guarantee it? All right. So now that we've got it graphed, we're going to hit second graph, and we're going to look at the table, and the table has some values for us to graph. So it says 0, 0. 1, 1, 2, 4, and then I want some negative values, so I'm going to hit the up arrow and kind of scroll back and get some negative values. Negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph these values. So left 2, up 4, Left one, up one, zero, zero, one, one, two, four. See where I put the extras down? All right. 
So even though that was all that fits on our table, our graph gives us one more point that we can fit on the grid. So it says negative 3, 9. I'm going to go ahead and graph that one too. Left 3 up 9. And then if I go to the positive end, positive 3, 9 is also there. So I'll go ahead and graph that one because it can fit. And then if I hit the graph button again, that's kind of the shape it should be is a nice U shape, not a V, but a nice U shape. So now I'm going to kind of draw this and just make sure it looks U shaped. Okay, so there's my graph. <clears throat> so this is the normal graph. This is with no transformations happen to it. It hasn't been shifted to the right or left. It hasn't been shifted up or down. It hasn't been reflected over the x-axis. It hasn't been stretched or compressed. Nothing's happened to it, it's just normal, okay? Now, this is what the equation can look like if you put other numbers in it. So if you put a number in the front, that can make the graph tall and skinny, it can make the graph short and fat, and it can take the graph and flip it upside down, okay? So if A is a negative, if the number in the front is a negative, it takes the graph and it reflects it over the X, axis. It reflects it over the x-axis. So what that does is it makes the graph look like this, makes the little u-shape upside down. So anytime you see a negative in the front, it doesn't matter what type of number it is, it just matters that it's upside down or that it's negative and then it makes the graph look upside down. If a is a number that is bigger than 1, it could be a positive number bigger than one. It could be a negative number that's bigger than one. So it could be like a negative two, could be a positive 1.5, could be a negative three, could be a positive two, could be a negative pi, could be a positive root seven. If it's any of those numbers, it vertically stretches the graph, makes the graph tall and skinny. If the A value is less than 1, it doesn't matter if it's negative or not. If it's a 2 thirds, if it's a negative 1 half, if it's a 0 0.7, if it's a negative 0.25, that's going to make the graph look short and fat. And that's a, <clears throat> a vertical compression. So that's taking the graph and squishing it. So the number in the front can do three different things, okay? Now, the number inside can do two things. It can move the graph to the left, and it can move the graph to the right, okay? Left and right. Left and right. And it's the opposite of what you would think. So if it's a positive number, it moves it to the left. And if it's a negative number, it moves it to the right. So it's kind of backwards. You have to think about how you would get out of the parentheses. So if you had a plus 2, if you had a plus 2, you would minus it to get it out of the parentheses, and so it's left. If you do the you're doing the opposite, yeah. If you had a minus 5, you would plus 5 to get it out of the parentheses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the number on the end is exactly what you would think it is because it's already outside the parentheses. So the number on the end, hey, Braden, stop messing with your watch, is up or down. And if it's a plus, it moves the graph up. And if it's a minus, it moves the graph down, okay? 
So those are all the transformations. If they ask what the transformations of the graph are, they're asking for the words of where the graph is moving. Is it getting tall and skinny? Is it getting short and fat? Is it moving to the left? Is it moving to the right? That's what they want to know. All right. Uh, the last thing that we usually ask for is what the vertex of the graph is. The vertex is this point right here. So that point right there is the vertex. For the parent function, it is the point zero, zero. Okay, now the vertex, if you have transformations happening to the graph, the vertex would be H comma K. And we'll practice finding that in one of the problems that has numbers. Okay, so in the first problem, they give you a, a quadratic that has a bunch of numbers in it, and we have to say what those numbers are. All right, so we have a two in the front. Is two negative? No, so it has not been reflected over the x-axis. Is two bigger than one, or is it less than one? It's bigger than one, so the two is a vertical stretch. That was the A value, so the two is a vertical stretch of two. This graph is gonna be twice as tall as the normal graph. Back table, you guys are talking way too much. You've been talking this whole time. Don't look at me like that. Don't look concerned. Just pay attention. All right, vertical stretch of two. This is the H value. That tells you if you've moved to the left or right. It's a minus two. So which way has it moved? To the right. This graph has moved to the right two. Okay. On the end, we have the K value. It's a positive number. So does it tell us if we've moved up or down? Up. Up three, okay? So those are the transformations. Now we can go ahead and say what the vertex is. The vertex is based on these two numbers, this number and this number. Now, just like when we decide left and right, we're gonna use the opposite of this number right here. So it says negative two, that means we're gonna use a positive two for our vertex. We just use the opposite sign. So vertex is positive two, and then we take the number on the end and we use it exactly as it is. Positive two, positive three. All right, so next let's go ahead and let's graph our vertex. Positive two, positive three. And at this point, we are ready to plug the equation in our calculator so that we can graph the rest of it. So let's grab our calculator, turn it on. We're gonna press the Y equals button right here. And we're gonna go to where our equation just was. We're gonna press the clear button, which is right underneath the down arrow. And then we're gonna type in two, the parentheses are above the eight and nine, parentheses X minus two squared, plus three. So go ahead and type that in. The parentheses are above the eight and the nine on your calculator. So we're typing in two times x minus two squared plus three. Brayden, you should be typing this in as well. And once you've typed it in, hit the graph button and then hold your calculator up so I can see that you graphed it. Perfect. But you have something wrong on yours because it doesn't look right. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, hit the graph button so I can see the picture. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes. 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 You didn't hit the squared button. Yes. 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 Uh, hit the graph button for me, Reese. Yes. So when you graph it, it should look like this. Everyone get in the graph? Looks like this. So our graph, you can see it, our graph has shifted to the right and shifted up. Uh, it's a little bit skinnier if you compare it to the last graph, but we can't really tell. 
it's, it's harder to tell in these graphs if they're skinny unless they're really, really skinny. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we need the points. How do we get to the points? Anyone remember? Second graph, mm -hmm. second graph, so we're hitting the blue button and then the graph button. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the vertex because the vertex on the graph is the middle. So we wanna find the middle of the graph so that we can do the rest of it. So two, three is the middle. So that's the middle right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two points on one side of the graph and two points on the other side of the graph. And because this graph is really tall, it's gonna go a little bit off the grid and that's totally fine, okay? So one of the points I'm gonna graph is one five, the other one is zero 11. So I'm gonna do over one up five and then zero 11, that's a little bit off the graph, but it's okay. So one five, zero 11, and then I'm gonna graph three five, four 11. 3, 5, 4, 11. And if we compare this to the parent graph, we can see that this graph is definitely skinny compared to the other one. And we can see that when we graph our first five points, they're definitely further apart. So this is how tall the first five points were on the parent graph, and this one is twice as tall as that. Okay, how do you guys feel? Can we graph the points? We got the points graphed? All right. Let's look at example two. We've got a negative in the front. What does the negative in the front mean? reflects over the x-axis. Okay, so this is the a value. The a value is negative, that means this is reflected over the x-axis. So that means when we draw the picture, it's gonna be upside down. Now, this a value does not have a number with it. So that means this graph is not gonna be skinny, it's not gonna be tall and skinny, it's not gonna be short and fat, it's just gonna be normal. Not tall, skinny, not short, fat, just normal. Okay, the next number is the h. It's a positive four. What does that mean if it's a positive four? It goes to the left four, okay? The next number is the K. That one is a negative five. What does it mean if it's a negative five? It goes down five, okay? And now we want to know what our vertex is. So for our vertex, we're gonna look at these two numbers. We take the opposite of this number. What's the opposite of positive four? Negative four. And then we take exactly the number on the end. So what's the next number? Negative five, okay. And so now I'm gonna graph negative four, negative five. And then we're gonna type this in on our calculator. There we go. Hit the Y equals button. And we're gonna clear what we typed before. So underneath the down arrow, there's a clear button. And we have to type the negative first. The negative is underneath the three. And then we need our parentheses, x plus four squared. Um, Trevor, if you look on the cart right next to the hole punch, there's a stack of papers right there and that's what we're looking at. You see the stack? Yeah, and we're on the example at the bottom of the page. Okay, so x plus four squared and then minus five. So uh, be careful when you type these in. If you guys notice the, the sign in the front, see how that's a little bit shorter? And see how this one is a little bit longer? On Desmos, when you do a minus sign or a negative sign, you use the same button for both of them. On a graphing calculator, it's a different button. 
So if you were to read this out loud, you would say negative x plus 4 squared minus 5. Are you ready? You would say negative x plus 4 squared minus 5. And because when you read those out loud, you say them differently, they use different buttons. So this one uses a negative button. This one uses the minus button. The negative button is underneath the 3. The minus button is over here above the plus sign. My minus is worn off. Okay, the negative button, the minus button. And you can always tell which one to use based on how you would say the problem out loud if you were to read it to someone. Does that make sense? Do I need to explain it again? So if we read this out loud, we would say negative x plus 4 squared minus 5. So this one uses the negative button. This one uses the minus button. And when you look at it on your calculator, the negative button is really short. The minus button is longer. And that's how you can tell you got them correct. Okay? So we've got this one. Go ahead and hit the graph button. And it should be right here. So once you've graphed it, go ahead and hold up your calculator so I can see you've got the right one. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. 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 Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, good, yep, yep, okay, good. All right, so once we have this, yes, once we have this, if we want to get our points, what do we do? Second graph. Second graph. And what point are we looking for? Negative four, negative five, because that's the middle. Okay, so I've got, there's negative four, negative five, there's the middle of our graph. And now I'm going to graph a couple points on each side. That'll be the rest of my graph. So negative 5, negative 6. Negative 6, negative 9. Negative 3, negative 6. And negative 2, negative 9. So just like we expected, you can see the graph has moved to the left and it's moved down. And you can see that it's upside down, just like we expected. OK. So what'd you say? Mm -hmm. So this is what we're doing today. We are taking the equations, we are writing down what the transformations are, we are finding the vertex, and we're graphing them on our calculator. That's what we're doing, okay? All right, um, so what I would do is leave these notes out in front of you, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hand out the worksheet. It is one page, front and back.